Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is May 8th, um, 2013, and we um, have a conversation with some people who are planning a conference um, August 4th through 8th, I think, right? So that's just a few months away um, in Boulder, Colorado, um, having to do with, they're called the International Democratic Education Conference, although Monica Hardy, who uh, will join us at any minute, I think, um, wants to change the last word there to the conversation of conference, but mm -hmm. she likes to change things around. So... Uh, so, um, welcome, and we have a couple of people who haven't been on the show before. I'm really happy to um, welcome them, and we'll get introduced here in just a second as Monica joins us. Um, and, um, Monica, we just got started. We, we feel you coming, and then we start. That's how it happens. Welcome, Monica. Um, and, and so, um, but I, I was about to say that um, in addition, we've invited a couple people to come and quickly say... Um, what they're doing this summer. So we, that's uh, kind of the theme that we're, that's going on. There's lots of MOOCs and lots of conferences and lots of uh, fundraising and lots of exciting things happening. So um, people may be joining us in the middle and just uh, announcing something. So I'm just saying that right away to, um, to let you know. Hi, Karen. Welcome. So Thank let's, you. <laughs> Let's check in with um, with uh, Sally and with Scott first, who are our new people. Um, Scott Nine, why don't you introduce yourself, perhaps? Sure. Now we have three Sallys, but the more the better. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Welcome. That's no, fine. You'll introduce yourself right after Scott does. Go ahead. All right. <clears throat> Hi, everybody. I'm Scott. I'm the I have a fancy title, Executive Director of Idea. Um, IDEA is the Institute for Democratic Education in America. That is not to be confused with IDEC, but we are a partner with the Patchwork School for putting on this international conference in Colorado. And it's exciting to, to spend some time with you. Very cool. Yeah, you've uh, said a lot there. I mean, I, I didn't know about the, con the uh, collaboration and all. So, Sally, you're from the Patchwork School, you were telling me. I am. Introduce yourself, please. Sure. Okay. I'm Sally. I'm the lead toddler teacher at the Patchwork School, which is we have ages one years old through 12 years old. And we're a private democratic school in Louisville, Colorado, and hosting the IDEC conference with IDEA, which is super exciting. Cool. And as we were chatting right before the show started, I was able to ask Sally a question. Now I'm going to ask it on air, which is, um, do you have to be toilet trained to come to your school? And I was really happy to ask that. That's the first time I've asked that on Teachers Even Teachers. And the answer is no, right? You can, nope. Yeah, it's one of the things. Wherever you, you are in the process, we welcome you. <laughs> okay. So welcome. Monica, do you want to introduce yourself? And we'll get, and then Karen as well. Sure, I was just going to say that's a pretty good policy to have wherever you are in the process. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm in Loveland, Colorado. Um, fortunate to be um, connected to these guys through both IDEA and IDEC. Um, and that's it. Cool. Karen, thank you for stopping by. Um, I, I did say at the beginning some people are going to stop by and just tell us what they're doing this summer. You're welcome to hang out as long as you want or, um, you know, or, or we could talk briefly about what you're up to, but um, welcome. Do you want to introduce yourself a little bit first? Though? Sure. I'm Karen Fassenpower, and I'm happy to be here. And today I am celebrating that I am officially accepted into Borderlands Writing Project for a summer institute this yeah, summer. Cool. And the, I'm planning the, on much of my summer with Writing Project people. So the Borderlands are the Borderlands of what? Which two states? Um. <laughs> Well, generally, I think Borderlands is Mexico, U.S., okay. and it's sort of a term Arizona, New Mexico uses. I see. I didn't know um, that. Okay. Borderlands Writing Project is based in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Well, exactly when are you doing that? And this is some of the things that we're going to talk about tomorrow, because <laughs> we hope Karen's going to be able to make it over to the New York City Writing Project as well. 
I think I can on week week three. It's um, July eighth. Um, Borderlands is it's two weeks, so it's July eighth to the nineteenth. Yeah. Okay. So we'll figure that out. So okay. one of the things Karen and I are doing, and we're going to um, have this big later, so I just want to give Karen an out if she wants to leave later, is that we're trying to put together a fundraiser for a um, summer institute workshop camp or something for young people um, at the New York City Writing Project. Um, and uh, we're going to announce that officially next week. But it's fun to announce it unofficially this week. And David Lloyds, who might jump in here with us, convinced us to go with Insight Ed. Um, dot org because he's doing a fundraiser for Imagining Learning. Is that right? I think that's the right name. Starting just today. So we hope he comes by and, and, and talks a little bit about that. So next week we, we, we're, we're going to have, um, I wish I had written his name down, but the guy, the guy from Open Road who is doing a fundraiser also and David and we're going to talk about fundraising and um, and so forth next week. So that's some of the things that we're doing this summer, um, but uh, as we uh, go here, I just wanted to kind of. I don't know, Mike. Hi there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mike. <laughs> no. Joy Auto, welcome. Yes. Welcome. Can you hear we, me? we can hear you, but we can't see you. Here, let me see if I can. Uh... Okay. So work on that. We're going to keep going, though, okay, Joy? Go ahead. Okay, great. So, um, you know, I, Scott, could I throw it to you and have you to explain a little more about IDEA? And, I mean, we've had IDEA stuff and people and ideas and on a couple of times, but never you and never to kind of explain what IDEA is and then move into IDEC, perhaps? And what you guys are thinking or planning about, and then Monica, take over with whatever kind of conversation you'd like to have with these folks. But is that yeah, good enough set up. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Thanks, Scott. So, um, so idea is really comes out of this idea that there's uh, thousands of amazing things happening across the country with teachers inside of schools and people outside of schools, but that largely we have a national conversation that doesn't really pay attention to the voices of young people and educators and families and that there's a real opportunity to connect those dots and so we use the word democratic education as a frame to try to weave together a whole lot of different threads and streams and philosophies and practices and we're trying to do that by embedding people in communities so we use kind of an organizing strategy to connect people in kind of five to seven hour increments where people are already teaching, already organizing, already working on policy change, and have them both team up and teach each other about what's going on in the national uh, conversation, what's happening in their own communities. And then we're really trying, when we're at our best, what's happening is that the networking nationally comes to a point in which actual teachers or people in communities get tools or resources that help advance their work, and vice versa, the local stories and understanding how things are different in different communities boil up and help contribute to a national conversation and narrative. Um, an example of how that looks is something like a year at missionhill.com, this video series that tells the story of one school in Boston but is actually being used in communities around the country to have a conversation about what's going on in education and how it can look. And so we tend to kind of talk about it as showcasing. So we start from a place of asset. There's really amazing things going on we don't know about. Organizing, how do we connect the dots? And learning, part of the thing is that the, the landscape of what's happening in the country is changing very fast. And there's kind of like a, I say, a four and a half year long gap between where policies and decisions are being made at the national level and where they seem to arrive in local conversations and where they begin to impact teachers. And we need to close that gap and it's got to be closed by young people and families and educators figuring this stuff out and finding ways to find each other. And so that's kind of what we're up to. Um, and we do that with a really clear set of values rooted in humility and story and being thoughtful about what's the kind of skills young people need to be meaningfully engaged in their future. And that it's not really about idea. There's actually all this great stuff going on. So how do we kind of get out of the way and be a different kind of organization that's not focused on making money um, off of off of folks or by uh, the, the kind of dysfunction of things, but really about how do we collaborate and elevate other groups or other stories.
Wow. That was very clear and <laughs> thoughtful. Thank I you. get a, I get a lot of practice. <laughs> I, get, I get a get a lot of opportunities. Yeah, I like that. uh, That's good. Uh, thank you. And then iDeck is this really neat thing. So so yeah. idea in part was was um, some of some folks that helped brew up idea uh, were were engaged with iDeck. iDeck is a twenty year old conversation that started with this uh, remarkable. See, Monica, it is a conversation. Okay. This, <laughs> this, this remarkable Israeli educator, Yaakov Hecht, who started a school in, um, in Hadera, uh, Israel, Hadera Democratic School, and, um, and he basically kind of was like, he was young, he was out of the Israeli military, and he wanted to think about human rights and about uh, civic participation and the engagement of people being treated with dignity. And he began to come up with a, the Israeli school system is very different than the U.S. But he started the school, and it, really rapidly there was a 3,000 person waiting list. And so they began to build out these schools, and they created a teacher training college to train people. And he was an advisor to the ministers of education in Israel. And he was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what's going on here. So he began to reach out with other people around the world to say, who else is thinking these things in different ways? And pull together a group of folks to really, what Monica says, to sit around and talk and say, like, what are we all doing? And, and what might we learn from each other? And it's gone from those 22 people to... Last year in Puerto Rico, we capped out at about 820 people uh, from 58 countries, um, really coming from this mutual learning place. So instead of the Exxon commercials with like, let's race each other and who's behind and all that kind of stuff, is people really talking about what's going on in the world. And the conference rotates countries and continents. And Patchwork bid for it a couple of years ago in England to host it. And after the conference in Puerto Rico last year, they asked us to get involved and help on the kind of national side. And they're doing all the hard work locally in logistics. And they're also helping take the lead with all the international collaboration. Um, and we're excited about, you know, kind of the energy going on. And we, we hope lots of folks will, will show up. We think it's an important chance to learn with the world um, and, and really pay attention to what's happening in ways we don't normally, educators in particular, don't normally get access to this kind of conversation. So. Very cool. Yeah. I said I was going to throw it to you, Monica, but so interrupt me if you want. But um, I, I, oh, Sally, I was wondering if you could say a little more about the philosophy of Patchwork and and why you guys wanted to do IDEC. Sure. So. so we have three main philosophies, democratic education, Reggio Emilia, and humana education. So, dang. Oh, no, one second. If we lost her again when, when David popped in. At least we know when it happened, Sally. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know how much, how much it helped. Um, Monica, do you want to jump in? Yes, or actually, I want to jump in. Go ahead. Um, I, it's real short. Um, you know how we're working on the Curiosity app, and um, actually that was our second choice. My first choice was to get a device that I would just wear on me and it would be Scott talking. Don't you just love how clear and he's, he's got it. Here's I mean, device. Totally. The Scott glass, is that what it is? Yeah. I think of um, Jason Freed when he talks about if you know what matters to you, just the vision is so clear. And so mm -hmm. I just really appreciate Scott for that. So that was my filler. Sally, you're back. That's great. <laughs> So we got two of the philosophies, but go ahead. And the third one? Oh, no. Wait, no, they, there you are. You're still here, right? Oh. Well, she's not. She's frozen. Okay, we'll figure that out. Sally's very, Sally, don't give up, okay? <laughs> it keeps kicking me off every time a new person comes on. So. I know, so don't take it personally. All right. When I leave. <laughs> I'm glad you're not taking it personally. So, go ahead. We got two of the philosophies. The third one is... Oh, humane education. So, why we really... I mean, we... Like Scott said, democratic education is good as a framework, and we really try to um, incorporate students' voices into all the decisions that we make at our school. And, you know, making it so that the education and the what we're doing is relevant to them. So... Um, we got involved in England and put in the bid to host IDEC just because it's such an amazing way to engage people in conversation about um, 
everything that's happening. What are we doing? You know, and so um, I think to be able to bring this really large conversation to Boulder and to expose a lot of local people to it and also to uh, gain a lot of input and, and see what people think about what we're doing here. Cool. Are your students going to be able to participate? Or? Yes, we're doing children's programming, which is uh, a really cool aspect. And so it's open to children of any age, and it's going to be in a similar kind of flow to what the adult programming will look like. Um, still follow the same kind of themes and everything, but it'll be a little more tailored to age, and they'll be able to be with other youth that are of similar age and get to connect with people around the world that they might not have the opportunity to do so in another setting. All right, so I, I did warn you we were going to try to interrupt as, as David Lloyds came on and so forth. Um, and uh, jo But Joy, do you want to introduce yourself briefly and then we'll keep going? Joy, we can't hear you. Okay, now can you hear me? Yes, we can. Welcome. Well, um, you know my name. And um, I'm in Portland, Oregon, so um, I teach at a school. I teach at... I'm an adjunct instructor with a community college, so I teach at a couple different schools. But the one I, um, I guess I, the one that I wrote to the conference about was one where it's a, it's called an early college program, and it allows students 18, uh, sorry, 16 to 20. It allows them to get a diploma or a GED and one year of college for free through the community college. So it's kind of a unique program, but. Um, it's, I've been doing it for a year, so I just got interested in democratic education while I was doing this program and kind of just looking around for ways to help these students, which are really, they're really hard to reach and have a really low success rate, so um, I was just very interested. And I read, actually, you mentioned Yakov Hecht, and I actually read his book. So that was one of the books that kind of um, helped me form my philosophy and become more interested in things. So are you coming to the conference, Joy? I'm going to try. I haven't filled out. I, I'm still waiting to find out from um, uh, my school if they're going to help pay for some of it, and then I'm going to apply for a scholarship, too, and see if I can get the money together. Cool. So, and if people wanted to do that, um, you know, if, uh, if somebody's not going to listen to the whole hour, let's jump right now and say how people could sign up for the conference if they wanted to. Could somebody say that? Who wants to do that? I can. Scott, okay, go ahead. Or. You're handling the... Go, the Sally! Go, Sally. Yay. go, Sally! So you can just go to www.idec2013.org and register there or fill out a learn and share form if you would like and it's What's the what is the learn and share form? Um it's I want to make sure I use my language carefully. <laughs> it's I guess what normal conferences would call workshop proposals, but it's very different because we're using open space technology and so those will be if you want to if you have something that you want to share at IDEC and want to submit it in a formal way, then that would be the way to do it. But it'll be very, um, it'll vary day to day, and so based on what people feel is relevant in their conversations during the conference, and then people facilitators will form and uh, assign rooms based on those specific interests. If that makes sense. Sure. <laughs> You know, if you tried to describe a, a, um, a, a traditional conference, it would make less sense. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's cool. I think it makes a lot of sense. The, the tricky, this is just a fun sharing of learning. The tricky thing is trying to find this balance. We want people who need to use their PD money if they're teachers in schools or folks who need to be able to get support and letters to have this pathway that they can come to the conference and they can convince folks that this is a good use of money and at the same time we kind of want to blow up the model that we do it in these traditional ways and so it's this tension between how do you kind of strike that light right language and so this is our kind of effort to say here's a thing you can fill out and a thing you can 
submit in a way that you can help get support to help you potentially attend the conference at the same time without getting the trappings of people standing up and talking for 55 minutes about um, you know one, one you know trying to create some, some better collision mm -hmm. so David Lloyds is causing lots of noise down there so David <laughs> jump, jump. I, I think not, you are not, but it's okay I'm not even typing I know. I don't know what it I is. I think someone's vacuuming your house. I'm guessing it's Marta, David. She's cleaning. She's, someone's cleaning or something. She's sleeping on the couch. <laughs> All right, so not her anything. So, David, you, you had a big launch today, and um, I was saying to Sally wow. earlier that the way they listen to students reminded me of imagining learning. Um, but so, do you want to make your announcement? Yeah, sure. And as long as I'm not making that. too much noise, if I'm. Try a different phone, different thing. Um, when you're, so, that's good. Whatever you just did, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, so today, I we launched um, with Imagining Learning, which uh, Imagining Learning is a, what's how do we say this? It's a visioning project to um, help young people um, have a space that allows their wisdom about education to come forth, and in a very creative way. And we're doing it. We're what we're doing is we're going on tours around the country um, to go to the communities and um, help uh, bring the space forward and then they go through a, a, a what we call a listening session that takes about three hours and um, we ask them a bunch of questions and there's a lot of storytelling involved and then the last hour they take all the stuff that they've talked about during the, the two, uh, first two hours and they create uh, in groups um, these four by six paintings of their their vision of what education what kind of education they would want and the visions are um, remarkable they're they're I mean, you, you wouldn't you wouldn't think to that the painting and education go together half the time because they're just so beautiful and um, their ideas of what can be in education are just so moving and so inspirational and so our idea is that if we get if we can collect all these um, visions of young people and their voices um, not only would it activate their own kind of thinking about how they can change education but by sharing out these visions and stories that more people will be inspired and activated to help to try to make their visions possible um, either by working at a local level working at a national level or by just asking their own students or their own children to um, what they would want in education we think there's something really powerful in just um, in starting by listening to young people because a lot of um, adults have not offered that space before, and a lot of students haven't had that chance to um, to be heard in a way that's safe and without any real um, adult uh, an adult interaction other than just you know being there to help provide the space and to to kind of lead the the listening session. So, mm -hmm. and so today, okay, good. Was, yeah, yeah. Uh, today we um, that was funded pretty much um, off of sweat and passion um, for the last four years, and um, we're just not allowed. We can't the the sweat and the passion will still be there, but we still we need some money to get us to the places to uh, to do the listening session. So we launched a a campaign today, a crowdfunding campaign today on Incited, a new education crowdfunding platform um, and our goal is to raise twenty five thousand dollars in the next month or so um, and that would that would fund us to go to um, there's 35 communities right now um, to this day who are requesting that we come and do listening sessions in their communities everywhere from Portland Oregon where I am to Portland Maine to Florida to all over the south um, all over, up and down the the coasts and uh, we just can't go there and uh, do this without money to get us there. I mean, it's really just money to get us there, and so this campaign is to help fund the, well, we will hope to do 50 more listening sessions um, so, in the next year at least. So so I, I want to give enough time to, um, our back to IDEC here tonight. Yeah, but, that's cool. Thank you. And, appreciate and it. To say, and to say that um, <laughs> we're going to have Incited on next week. Uh, um, you're yeah. coming back, I hope, Dave. Yes, and yes. And uh, you maybe you know his name from Open Road. He's going to be joining yeah, Alan, us. Yeah, Alan. Well. Yeah, Alan Byrne. 
Okay. And, and, and we hope to have um, a campaign up by then, too. So, you know, it, and it may seem funny, like we're not really competing. We're kind of figuring if you hear about all three of them, you'll contribute to all of them. And, uh, yeah. Our, you know, together yeah, we can, yeah. we can, we can uh, you know, let Just people the, know what's, what we're doing. One of, the, one of the, one of the um, backdrops of Incited is also to incite this type of education and this side of these types of conversations are happening. So we're not definitely not competing. What we're doing is we're joining together to, uh, to plant seeds of these kinds of um, innovative, you know, student centered democratic education, all the things that all the people who are going to IDEC really, you know, they were, we all have to be funded in some way. And we're, this is a creative way to, not be not have to go the traditional routes of trying to get funding from grants and through you know foundations that will try to dictate um, your mission and so this is a way to let the people have a voice using their dollar or just their support and um, also for people to get to know each other by seeing different uh, campaigns that you know that are in Portland or in New York or in other places and connecting so there's my little pitch for Insighted. Hey, cool. hey guys, um, Scott has to leave here. Oh, okay. Please let him have. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> and that's that's what we yeah. <laughs> go ahead, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, sorry, I just got some. Uh, I got to go attend a little personal news on the home front. <laughs> okay. that, uh, not not so good. Um, my mom, my my mom's having health problems, which is I'm not the only person on the planet that's happening for. But I'm at my point in my life where that's getting attention in surprising ways. And that's why uh, you are where you are too. <laughs> well, yeah. So I just wanted to, um, yeah, just be, before I leave, just to say thanks, Paul, for the hosting and the conversation. And I, I'm I look forward to seeing what happens after I hang up. Um, but appreciated meeting folks for the first time, and and just you know, thanks for having this conversation. Thanks for your clarity, but could you leave us with a question that we could solve for you? Uh, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, a question you could solve for me about IDEC. Yeah, about IDEC. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, then, let me see for a second. I have I could think of thirty. I got to pick one. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I'll go with this one. Um, so the way we currently are designing the conference, we've got the morning to have these coffee talk sessions. So instead of having traditional speakers, we're miking up three or four people. But we're planning to do that by kind of tent or room with a focus on kind of young people, parents and families, educators, kind of policy makers, and media and artists. And that's awesome. But one of the downsides is it doesn't necessarily allow collision amongst them in that same kind of space or conversation. And so one way we're doing that is to rotate coffee talkers across them. But how might we both allow that kind of focus and discussion, but any creative ideas about how to then also allow folks to merge or weave so we're getting the best of that, but not lose the focus? I'd welcome people to struggle through that one, and um, or not struggle, have fun with it. And I appreciate, that, appreciate the invitation to ask a question. <laughs> Cool. Thank you, Scott. And right. well, welcome go. back another time. All right. Thank you very, thank you very much. Bye, everybody. And I, I gotta say, I, I invited Paul O to uh, make a quick announcement if he'd like to. So I want to give him a chance, and then we'll we will get back to Ida and to finish off with that. But Paul has been doing from uh, a consult with the National Writing Project has been doing like I can't even figure out all of the different things you're doing this summer. But can you say a couple of them, Paul, and tell us what you're thinking about? Sure. It's great to be here. Hi, everyone. Can you all hear me? Mm -hmm. You're good. Or you were. Is this all? Oh, yeah. You know what? I'm sorry. I had a little bit of a delay there. But um, can Just you hear me going. now? Yeah. Yep. Uh, okay, great. So one of the things that... Uh, so, so our main focus, essentially, is we're really thinking about um, making and learning and uh, how making and learning is um, powered by connected learning principles. And so if you're not familiar with those, it's, um, you know, it's a set of design and learning principles uh, that have been developed um, out of some work that the MacArthur Foundation has engaged in, uh, really based initially on an ethnographic study um, led by researchers like Mimi Ito around the ways in which learners learn. 
So that said, um, this summer we're actually trying to power up um, opportunities for educators, um, and that's educators writ large. So it's both in school, out of school, formal, informal, you know, anyone who self-identifies really as an educator um, to come together and to be able to share opportunities, learning opportunities with one another. Uh, and that falls under this, you know, sort of general umbrella, umbrella of a summer of making and connecting. And so right now there's a splash page up, makesummer.org, and um, soon, we hope, very soon, perhaps even tomorrow, I think it might be, at makesummer.org, there will be um, more content up, and it won't just be a splash page, but there will actually be things that you can dive into. How's that for extending the metaphor? <laughs> and, uh, and then um, underneath that is uh, some, some work that we're specifically doing with educators. Um, actually, the Mozilla Foundation is, is one of our partners in this work, and the Mozilla Foundation has started something called uh, Maker Party 2013, and they've actually launched uh, what they call Mozilla's, uh, I think, what is it? Mozilla's Open Online Collaboration. That's, that's what they're calling it. It's, a, it's a, their version of a MOOC. Um, called Teach the Web, and um, and so that's you know falling under this umbrella, and we are starting some work around something we're calling the Educator Innovator um, Initiative, and uh, there'll be a web space up that um, you know I can't point to right at the moment; it's not quite finished, um, but should be launching by the end of the month, and that'll be a place where educators, like I said, would be able to find these kinds of opportunities um, that they would be able to share with one another, take advantage of. You all should feel free to join in um, and uh, you know participate. And then I would say one other element to this that actually Karen and Paul uh, are involved with is our own um, you know open online collaborative learning experience um, that we're calling uh, making learning connected. And so that's going to be launching in mid June. And again, I don't really have anything to point you to at the moment, but you all are also welcome to join in and participate. So I would say that that's the broad umbrella of what's happening. And so I think how, how do you keep track of all this? How do I how do I personally? I don't know, or anybody. It's like I mean, it's wonderful. There's all this uh, activity, but it's a lot. But, yeah. Well, so you know, it's interesting, Paul, because first of all, yes. I'm having a hard time personally staying on top of it all and, and uh, you know, helping our team of people make it all happen. That's neither here nor there. No <laughs> one's problem on this, you know, hangout uh, that uh, needs to think about this. But I would say that one of the ideas behind this Educator Innovator Initiative is to really provide um, an opportunity for people who are interested, educators who are interested in connected learning principles um, in, in making, in you know, making as an opportunity to learn in youth-centered production, in um, peer-mediated uh, culture, in a participatory culture, to really mm -hmm. find ways in which uh, they might, you know, have uh, opportunities that make sense to them that they could engage in. So I think, you know, though it sounds complicated and confusing, perhaps in the way that I described it, and that's maybe my fault, no. I think the idea is to try to create something that is, um, you know, is a little bit of an umbrella. So for instance, like, we're also reaching out to different partners, like, um, you know, like EdCamp is involved, and, you know, their offerings will be, you know, available through this Educator Innovator umbrella. Um, you know, National Novel Writing Month. Um, I was just talking to Karen today about P2P School of Ed. Um, so we're trying to create a way in which um, an educator could see, you know, sort of in this network of networks way, um, across these various networks, opportunities that might make sense to them. Including including TTT in some way. So we'll, and TTT, that's gonna, right. So TTT, we that. talked yeah. so, about it as well. Oh, yeah. So... Yeah, exactly. I don't know if you want anything to add about where we're at with this coll collaborative so, so the ones, online experience, the, the MOOC that we're planning. The one site you pointed to uh, was makesummer.org, make summer right? And so we could find out about the other things by going there, probably? Is that uh, a good point? Say it again. I'm sorry. I missed that question. Makesummer.org is the one site you said will be up tomorrow, and we could find out about the other things there once they yeah, become exactly. live. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Right. So I think as of so, tomorrow, you'll start seeing some of the pointers to these other other spaces, actually. 
so Paul, thank you, um, and we we'll, obviously we'll get back to you. Want to leave the rest of the time we have to letting IDEC talk through things. But let me just ask: Do you think we've been enacting um, IDEC here tonight? <laughs> That's my hope. That there's like lots of conversations going on. But how? So yeah. So what do you want to say about IDEC at this point? And why don't you pull this together for us if you can? Sally, do you have any thoughts at this point? <laughs> Well, I think all of these things, everything that has been said is also very connected to IDEC. So it's really mm -hmm. exciting to hear all the things that are happening, and I hope that these conversations and exciting things can continue to happen, and that's part of why we're having this conference, is to explore all of those things. And um, so I've just loved hearing what everybody's doing. I think it, yeah. I don't know if, Monica, if you have other things to say about IDEC totally, that you're excited about. Yeah. yeah, I totally agree, Sally. It's... That's one thing that I love about IDEA and IDEC is it's it's not it's not another thing to figure out who they are and what they are. They're a framework for everything. So mm -hmm. this is the conversation. David, do you have anything to add to that um, about IDEC? Or... Um, I think it's exactly what IDEC is going to be about. I mean, I think what teachers teaching teachers. Um, is is an IDEC, a mini IDEC, um, just every night, um, or at least every Wednesday night. <laughs> um, just the idea that, you know, when you get uh, creative minds together, you get creative connections, and then that all that leads to transformation. Um, I think that's important. It's kind of what we do at the, we've done at the Cooperative Catalyst, or at least we try to do, and um, it's what IDEC, at least this version of IDEC is, is about. I think it's what un Unconferences is about. I think just the idea that you don't necessarily have to have a real structured, formal um, setting to do learning is a, is kind of revolutionary in itself. And uh, I think any space that provides that kind of um, opportunity to, to play with that idea is uh, important. There's my little soapbox for a second. Mm -hmm. Monica, you were going to say something? Or? No. I think I got my say in. No. Okay. I was just agreeing. Okay. Oh. So, I mean, so, so, go ahead. I, all, all I was going to say is that I totally get, and it was like, I don't know, my second or third year of teaching, when it looked like there were, you know, there were so many things going on. Like I, and so what I decided was I'm going to pick one of these and really do them well, and I'm not going to worry about everything that's going on. So I kind of feel like that way now with both the MOOCs and the um, the uh, make summer stuff and and conferences and everything. Like just picking, I, I think people should just pick something and just hang on to it and do that. I kind of get that from a participant's point of view. But we're not answering Scott's question earlier, which was, and maybe we should try a little bit, like from an organizer's point of view, how do you kind of make sure that there's enough cross-fertilization happening? I guess that was one of the ways he was saying it. Um, but still giving people freedom to do what they need to do. So. Well, so just to, to bring it back to more concrete, it, I, one of the things IDEA does is we do these, um, what we're changing to uh, call be called uh, learning tours of schools, uh -huh. uh, where we, we pick four schools and we take people over the course of four days to visit four schools. And I think in some ways that is that kind of cross pollination. You have people going from coming from out of either out of state or out of the city or out of at least the school and coming to cross pollinate. And we, one of the things that we found was quite interesting. There are two schools that were on the tour, tour were literally like three blocks away from each other. One was a, a, a Reggio preschool, and the other was a, um, an elementary school where a lot of the kids who, go to, who went to the Reggio preschool end up going to preschool in first grade. And, and they're doing a, they have a lot of similar um, energy, and, and they, didn't even, they had never even been in each other's spaces. Um, and I think that is what I think is kind of, ex I, don't, I don't know if this answers the question, but I think that is what is happening in education. And I, not, to, um, not to challenge your comment, because I think there's a lot of truth in say, staying with one thing until you do it well, but I think what a problem with education right now 
is that people kind of get on their island and their little thing is it even if you know public school or charter school or you know technology and they just stay there and they don't mm -hmm. they don't venture out into other places because there's a lot I mean they were saying like the, the, the preschool was like they were at a high school one of the one of the schools with a high school and they're like obviously they're not gonna probably get you know direct correlation to what they're doing in their classroom but they were learning all kinds they said oh my god I've never been in a high school thinking about learning in the way that you know we usually do when we go to like a Reggio conference or something and just like the stuff I'm gonna bring back is maybe not practice but it's just these like, ideas and connections and like ways to think of things differently and and so that's why I get excited about what idea does and what IDEC could be is this, this idea that sometimes we get kind of tunnel vision and we, we forget to kind of see things with new lenses and hopefully if IDEC is successful it will cause people to see things with new lenses, even if they are just focused on their one thing. They come back to it, uh, seeing things differently, seeing their own experience, learning experience differently. And hopefully that provides a little growth or um, yeah. development in whatever way it can. I love how you added to what I said, so great. <laughs> Anybody else want to add to that? I'll throw out a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. I'm reading um, Matt Hearn's book. Um, well, one of his books, Everywhere All the Time, a new de-schooling reader. And I think it's very fitting with what we're talking about because it's just a compilation of democraticness happening every part of the world. You know, it's just little vignettes of, you know, here in Thailand, here in Israel. Um, Yaakov has a little section in there. Dana, um, Venus is in there as well. Um, and so to me that's getting out of your silo. You still see similarities because we're all human, you know. If the, if, the, if the question about what's your nationality and the answer is human, <laughs> you, you see the similarities but they're, they're in that I'm envisioning IDEC, and they're in the crossing of the people, you know, you're not in the tent that you were assigned or that you picked originally, um, just because we're all human. So um, I, I'm imagining as brave as we can be with leaving things, you know, structured for people that want it, but being completely open and supporting people's randomness and their um, whimsy so that that's how you get the cross-section, you know. Having that non-compulsory feeling, which is a desperately what public education needs right now, a non-compulsory feeling. So anyway, the book is just wonderful. So I highly recommend it, um, Matt Hearn. Cool. I just want to invite um, Joy and um, Sally to jump in. <laughs> if they have any thoughts they'd like to add? Sure. I'm, I'm a very logistical, like, I have to, like, have that in my brain. So the Good. question that uh, Scott <laughs> We need left you too. <laughs> the question that Scott left with us is, like, having me just really curious of how we could make this happen so that coffee talkers in the morning, you know, everybody can be exposed to different speakers and uh, just how can we make that happen in a way that doesn't seem chaotic? Because I think with open space technology, it is this really fine balance of, you know, having structure and an open structure, but also letting people um, do, you know, have the power to choose what they feel is most relevant. So that's kind of what I'm struggling, and I don't know the answer to it. <laughs> I think part of that is, again, exactly what we need to do in public education. Um, if it's public, it's concerning all the people. And if it's education, it's bringing out what's already in the person. You know, educe, I think, is the word that means to bring out or bring from within. So, so there we are in Boulder. And we're just offering up the structure that we already have in place. Here's workshops that you can go to. through the. If you want to come and not be random at all, 
super. It's public education. We have that for you. You know, here's the schedule. If you want to come and be completely random, super. We have written all over. Open. You can go on a hike right now. You can grab ten of your friends. We have, you know, um, a 24/7 makerspace. You just go hang out and do whatever. Or we have organized makerspaces. You know. Um, so I think providing the resources, which part of the resources are structure, that's that's extrinsic structure. You know, um, I think does that help at all? I, we're not used to it, so it's yeah, it's gonna feel crazy. Um, but having lived through it myself, if you can get yourself, if you can grit yourself past the point of discomfort of chaos, you flow into this chaotic. Bliss. <laughs> so, yeah, it's probably going to be more tense on the people trying to maintain that, you know, because mm -hmm. it's it's you at the last minute you're like, I didn't plan enough, you know. I've got to I've got to make sure this is. So we do that. We have it all there, but it's it's non compulsory. That's the mm -hmm. piece that lets people choose. Sally, can I explore a word that you used a couple of times, um, and I'm not sure what you mean by it. Um, you said open space technology. You're using open space technology. Right. What 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 specifically do you mean by that? Well, what we are using at IDEC is that participants will fill out a learn and share form when they um, each day, and a facilitator team is going to take all of those ideas and and organize them in a way that makes it so what determines what is the interest of the people. Um, and so people then can uh, meet up with others based on those interests. And so it's not this set structured, we're going to have this speaker at 1.30 and then this speaker at another time in this room. It's, it's all very fluid and it, it depends on the day and where the conversation is going. And so um, at least that's been my um, understanding and experience of open space technology is it's a format and a frame for um, organizing and doing conferences that are not the typical uh, traditional conference. You know, before we started officially recording, you started describing to me some of what you do at Patchwork. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, is there is there some of that that you can use for this conference too? Like, yeah, I mean, that's what we do every day at our school. <laughs> can you explain? Yeah. Sure. Well, what we were just kind of talking about before was um, what we do on a daily basis is um, depends on what the children are interested in and what comes up for them that day. So we don't have very structured lesson plans for the whole week. It, it depends on where people are at. And so, for instance, I gave the example of a lot of our preschoolers are into volcanoes and then we document and that's going to be another big part of the conference is using Reggio Emilia uh, the documentation aspect of that in our spaces so we can track and see where these conversations are going and facilitators can use that to further deepen that exploration so like with preschoolers it could be volcanoes and they really want to know more about magma and it, it could be something you know totally different at IDEC but it's the same kind of principle on the um, yeah. Mm -hmm. see, what, see what local expert we have there? <laughs> Haley as well. I mean, it's going to be great. As, 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 as kids at Patchwork get older, do they start documenting their own conversations? Or, or mm. do the teachers still do that documentation? Teachers mostly still do it, but we have had a lot of... Uh, older children doing their own, like, making movies and things like that, but that's more of an interest. Mm -hmm. um, it would be interesting to kind of try, but I also think it's nice to have someone from a totally outside perspective who can, who can just, uh, document it without bias and, and just kind of see the, the truth there. So, hmm. Karen, you've been shaking your head up and down. Do you want to same thing? Jump in. Yeah. I do. Um, so I love the open space thing. And I think for for anybody who's watching, sometimes in education we call it unconference model, sort of in a conference format, if that helps. But I was just at a really good one that 
that had a, it was a deeper learning conference and they did a lot of open space stuff and one of the ways that they coordinated across groups was at the beginning of at the beginning of the day or at the beginning of the conference they assigned people into I forget what they called them but I think they were like advisory groups and they were just sort of random groups of 30 people so you had a thing on your name tag that said you're in group 7 go to this room mm -hmm. and they did sort of an opening activity that was around what do you want to get out of this and you know just a pretty short like half hour sharing thing and then everybody went and did their open space thing and switched and whatever randomness they wanted and then at the very end of the conference people came back to their advisory group and shared out how they what they learned or what how they addressed their initial inquiries that they had and it was a nice way to sort of cross across the groups um, that Scott was talking about like how do you make sure that people sort of touch base back so I don't know I think it depends how many people and what the logistics are but at least for me that was a really that seemed like a really effective way of doing that. I'm glad you brought that up because as far as I know, that's part of the plan of a daily. And I think it was, Sally, I think it was the end of the day that you meet up with this group and kind of recap mm -hmm. the day. It might be the beginning too, but, but I do love the daily aspect. Um, and, and again, to, to address Scott's issue, if you're filling out a, a share card every day, you get the chance to be in a completely different group the next day, you know. In fact, it's pretty likely. Um, so, yeah, th that's part of it. That's I'm glad you brought that up, Karen, because I think that's important. And then a lot of times you can use digital sharing, too. Just have somebody snap pictures of all this stuff and organize it in some way online so that people can sort of tap into all the good stuff they missed. It sounds cool. I want to go to this. <laughs> Please come. We would love for you to Better. be Better. Why aren't you coming? I'm going to be gone the whole summer. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so how, how are you guys planning? Let's sort of end there. Like, is there a group of people planning IDEC, or how's that, how's that working? Yeah. So um, Haley and I are the local organizers in Boulder through Patchwork and our staff is helping too and then we've teamed up with IDEA which we mentioned before and so Monica and Scott and Jaisha and a couple of others are well, going to uh, come but she didn't make it but go ahead yeah, we'll go yeah ahead are on yeah. that team and mm -hmm. then Isaac Graves is doing some international outreach and so we've kind of created this really brilliant group of people to come together and, and organize it all too. So we each hold different responsibilities, and it's been really crucial to have everyone on board and doing their part. It's a big conference, and it's really exciting. And I think it's going to be really amazing and something different. Cool. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing it with us tonight. Um, and, you know, we, we can uh, open this up as, as uh, other planners want to get involved in, uh, if, if it's helpful to do TTT again, we'd be happy to do that. Um, Joy or um, or David, do you have any kind of last thoughts here? Since you guys haven't been saying as much here at the end. Joy, how about you? What are you thinking? Yeah. <laughs> we can't hear you yet, Joy. I don't really I have... You. I don't okay. really have a whole lot of thoughts. Um, I'm, I'm hoping to go to the conference, and um, I'm looking forward to it. I, you know, it's hard being I'm an adjunct, and um, I don't often, I don't even meet other teachers a lot of the time, so mm -hmm. it's really hard for me to collaborate with people. So I'm really hoping that if I do go, you know, that that would be a chance for me to um, not only just get some ideas to bring back, but hopefully... Um, you know, just make some contacts with people and share ideas. Well, you made it here tonight. I really yeah. appreciate it. <laughs> have you have you done hangouts before? Or? Well, I have with my friends, but That's not nice. um, anything official like well, this. Well, we're your no. friends, too. Thank you. <laughs> Come back soon. <laughs> soon. Um, David, you get last well, word. I was just going to say, Joy, uh, both me and Scott live in Portland, so you have two new friends who are teachers. Um, and you can join us um, if you want in any of our idea activities. Um, 
Do I have any ending thoughts? I just I think that um, I want to thank you guys for holding the space and allowing us to, to always come on here and not only amplify what we're about, but talk about it and reflect on it. And I think that's um, what's exciting about this, and that's what hopefully IDEC will be too. So I'm excited. I will definitely be an IDEC um, with all the other IDEA people. Um, and Again, hopefully Imagining Learning will too. So. August 4th through 8th, and if you want to register, you go to what site again? IDIC2013.org. Okay, cool. Well, um, thank you. I, we uh, want to sign off just by saying thank you to Jeff Lebo and Dave Cormier, who um, have set up this community at edtechtalk.com. And um, we're Teacher Teaching Teachers, which you can also find at teacherteachingteacher.org. Um, if you look for me on YouTube, Paul Allison, you, you'll find this uh, within about half an hour. It goes up. Um, and then eventually I'll get it up as a podcast, too, at teacherteachingteachers.org. Thank you all, and we'll see you next week to talk about Insight and Insight Ed, I'm sorry. And um, and three, uh, hopefully three, if we get it together, um, <laughs> um, crowdsourcing, um, fundraising kinds of projects that uh, we're doing, or people are doing this summer. Thank you all, and we'll talk to you next week.